Hello, I'm Graham Fitch, bringing you this video demonstration on technical exercises and studies for Pianist magazine. And as usual, I'm coming from Steinway Hall in London. So the first thing we're going to look at in this video, I've got two videos for you on technical exercises. The first one is for the beginner, elementary and lower intermediate kind of levels. Um, and then in the next video, I'm going to be looking at the upper intermediate and advanced um, repertoire, not repertoire of exercises, that is. So we've got, whenever we're doing technical exercises, we've got to remember the history of these exercises, that a lot of them happened at a time when pianists were trying to, uh, what they thought, strengthen fingers. Um, because when we look back into our ancestry, uh, we came from harpsichord playing and forte piano, the early piano playing, where it was very possible to play with, you know, fingers with a very still arm, and, and it was really just finger movements. But as the piano got bigger and the repertoire got more complex, we weren't able to keep up with that. But people tried, and there were all sorts of mechanical devices they used, all sorts of endless exercises where we had to lift our fingers and really develop strength in the fingers, which is a misnomer. We don't need strong fingers as such. What we need is to coordinate the finger with the arm and the, and the rest of the body. So let's have a look, first of all, um, at a really nice exercise for the beginner, almost as soon as you can play a triad at the beginning stage, this, in both hands, you can play the grand arpeggio, do you see what I'm doing? Crossing my body and then coming down. Now what I'm aiming for here is completely smooth transitions between the hands. Not only that, but also some shape perhaps a crescendo as we go up and a diminuendo as we come down. We don't need to look at any music for this, we can understand that that's a triad major and that's a triad minor and also that the minor may have a different quality, well does have a different quality. So if I'm playing the minor, I can play that with a little bit more darkness of character. You might even want to use emojis if you're a teacher teaching these. Which, what emoji is this? You might find that that's a bit too quick for your average beginner, but it's well worth using these little exercises to develop the reflexes for speed that you're going to use later because it's very simple to remember. I'm not saying it's simple to do, but it's, it's for the developing pianist from the early stages. Now, don't forget, if they can use the pedal, or if you can reach the pedal, you can tie that up with the pedal also. So give it shape, give it character, give it dynamic variety, pedaling if you can reach. Now, I'm going to have a little look at just a, a small selection of exercises, starting off with the Etude Intelligente, or Intelligent Studies, of Piot Lachert, um, published by Bear and Reiter. These are really sweet. Um, I like what he does here. He's got a cluster in the left hand, we, so we put down a, a cluster of notes silently, which gives a little resonance. Now, we've got a piece here called, a little study anyway, called Little Mice Out Walking, and this is the right hand family, and it's a little study for the thumbs, or for the thumb. So I finger one, two, one, two, one, two. Can you hear the resonance? And then bring it back down. Then one three, one three. And then one four. Get the idea, and it ends with a nice big cluster down there. So that already introduces kind of interesting sounds and shapes, rather than just a dry, kind of boring mechanical exercise. So this book is full of really useful um, Little, little contraptions like that that will certainly do the job of making the thumb flexible. So we've got a smooth arm traveling outwards and back downwards, and with that smooth arm, we've got a thumb that's moving under the hand, under the second finger, under the third finger. Really valuable. We probably all know The Dozen a Day by Edna May Burnham, um, and some of you will think, oh, well, they're, they're too old, they're passé, but actually they're really good. Not all of them are really good. I don't particularly like the five-finger ones where she does, you know, this, 
because for the beginner, that's really quite difficult to do. When we're playing five finger exercises of any sort, we have to make sure we move. Can you see this mobility here in my, my wrist? A lateral adjustment of wrist. Thumb alignment towards a pinky alignment, and then back. And then I can play that pattern of notes really freely and really flexibly. But of course, you'd have to know that that's what you had to do. If you didn't know that, you could get into all sorts of problems lifting up pistons. Um, jumping off the front porch steps. There's a little stick figure here of somebody jumping from the top of the step, and there's an arrow, and she, he or she is jumping to the bottom of the steps. And here we go with a triad here. Up, down. So the graphics really help. That's such a simple exercise, you can easily remember that, memorize it, and perhaps play it in any key of any piece that you're playing. It's really good for freedom in the arms, the release out of the keyboard, up, and the landing into the lower note. Now, the push-up, this is from book three of Dozen a Day. Very nice little exercise. The, the, the three stick figures here, <laughs> doing a push-up or a press-up, um, First of all on the ground, and then on the second one, push up, up, and back down again. You see how this works? Double thirds, but really nicely choreographed. So what we're doing is we're pushing against the key upwards, and that up thrust, small up thrust, frees up the arm completely, so then we don't get tight at all, and we play the double thirds in a very coordinated way. This is a neat little one also from book three called Skipping, in which uh, it's, it's really just a, a dominant seven. You see what's good about that is again, you've got the up thrust in the arm, which releases any tension, and then the alignment onto the next note of the chord. It's easy to feel the alignment, this movement here. How many people have attempted to play an arpeggio in this way? And they felt, oh, my fifth finger and my fourth finger are so weak, I must do some exercises to strengthen my fourth and fifth finger. When all they, all, all they needed to do was to align, move, let go of the thumb position. You see what I'm doing there? I'm not holding onto my thumb position. Moving across, then down. And you can apply that to any chord that you're playing at this sort of level. Let's have a little look at Hannon. We couldn't do an, a, a, a video on exercises without touching on Hannon. Now, it's polemic, isn't it? There are those who absolutely uh, believe in Hannon. And I'm talking not only about teachers, but concert pianists of international renown who practice Hannon regularly. And there are those, of course, who are uh, so, so dead against it. But I think let's, let's try and keep a middle ground here, tread a middle path through this. I'm going to use Hannon now. I'm going to use the first exercise for a variety of different choreographic purposes, starting off just with transfer of arm weight through a loose wrist. You see what I'm doing there? It's my arm that's playing, not my finger. That's important to remember. My finger just happens to be on the end of my arm, but my wrist, a little push here, a little push into the key, and a release. You see that release? And that's the, those are the sorts of movements we use when we're playing legato cantabile. So quite the opposite of what Hannon originally intended. Um, how about a lateral wrist movement? I'm going to change the key. Let's modulate to D major. Do you see, there's that lateral movement I was showing you. And also, another adjustment that we need to make when we put short fingers on black keys, thumb and pinky, we need to move in. Let me show you. Now I have to go in for the black key, stay in for the thumb on the black key, and then draw out. So I've got freedom of movement here and this way. How about turning that lateral movement into a wrist circle? Hoist up on the pinky, up, round, up. And that wrist circle is so freeing and so liberating for the hand um, that it doesn't feel like I'm doing any work at all. 
I'm going to use this also as a thumb exercise, and so that you can see what I'm doing, let me just show you in the left hand. So, descending in the left hand, I'm going to use just two fingers, one and two. Right, rather like that little mice exercise I was showing you, now one and three. It doesn't have to be fast. One and four. That is a great exercise to practice. Let's move to number six, this one, and I'm going to use it for rotation. Forearm rotation. I think you'll hear that I'm adding shape to the, to, the, to the, I was going to say to the music, it's not music, but I'm trying to make it musical. So what am I doing? Let's see. Giving it little contours up, down, um, crescendo as I go up. So I just make it sound as good as I can and feel as good as I can. And I'm going to end this video with a look at two etudes that I highly recommend from Bergmuller, the, the Opus 100 set, um, which starts with a piece called La Candeur in C major. Now, this takes exercises up to a whole new level because it's music. And if I play you a little bit of it, you'll hear that it's not at all dry, it's really expressive, really satisfying, but I'm moving in very similar ways to the exercises that I've previously studied. So exercises, then studies. Do you see the wrist circles here? Shaping. Diminuendo. Sorry, crescendo, then diminuendo. Little shape there. See the wrist circles. Rotary movements there. So we've got a piece of music that happens to be designed around movements, uh, five finger position. The next one and my last example for this video will be the arabesque of Bergmuller number two. Fantastic for chord playing triads in the left hand, triads of different shapes, and the down up drop roll slur in the right hand, down up, down up, let me put that together. Now the other way around. How fantastic is that? It's a lovely piece of music, it's highly educational, and it sounds really good. So when we're practicing exercises, always ask yourself, what am I hoping to achieve by them? Never practice them mechanically, and always practice them with attention to good sound and good feeling in the body.